you know, just in case you hadn't noticed it yet, or more appropriately, anyone who is watching online, live as you are watching it on Sunday morning, uh, January 14th, um, you know what's going on. For anyone else who may be coming to this after the fact, either to this service or to the message as it shows up on our YouTube channel, and it might be a warmer time of year, let's say, uh, it is cold right now. It is so very, very cold, like really, really cold. Like we're not even hitting positive digits for a high temp today. And this temperature started falling on Friday and it has kept falling until earlier this morning. We've started to creep back up, um, or at least theoretically, that's how it's supposed to go. With that in mind, it is always weird and a little bit ironic for us in the Midwest and the places north of us that we get to baptism of the Lord Sunday in the middle of January, right? I mean, the last thing any of us are really wanting to do right now is to go get dunked in a big tank of water. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> right now, it would probably just be a big, uh, big block of ice that we'd be getting, uh, we'd be getting stuck in. But uh, now. I, I say all that, and I have done my fair share of silly things with water and cold weather. And some of you have heard a few of those stories, and uh, one of the goofiest ones, though, came when I was in college. I know any story that starts with when I was in college is probably one that's going to be a little bit uh, goofy. I know that. I've accepted that about myself. But we were on choir tour up in the Twin Cities, so up in Minneapolis and St. Paul, up in that area. It's been long enough now, I don't even remember all the places we went, but I remember the homestay that we had, that some of us had. It was wonderful, it was great, it was a lot of fun. They had a hot tub, an outdoor hot tub in Minnesota. And so like it could hold like four or five people, so naturally of course we put like ten of us in there. And uh, we thought that was a lot of fun. It was kind of cool, especially for these college kids from, the, uh, from Kirksville. And it was so cold. And, and there's like six or eight inches of snow on the ground. When one of the guys said, hey, what if we got out and rolled in the snow and then got back in? In case you were ever wondering, I do not recommend getting out of a hot tub and rolling around in the snow uh, in the middle of January. or Fe I think it was in February that we did this. It really is not one of our better ideas. Uh, like I said, I've done some really silly and goofy things with water and cold weather. But it becomes even crazier when you know this about me. I have not done a lot of uh, full immersion baptisms in my ministry. I've been at this for quite a while now. And uh, all of the full immersion baptisms I have done have been here in uh, Marceline, which has been wonderful. The crazy part is that, the, is that they have all been in the months of January and February. Right? And no, I didn't take anyone out into a local creek and freeze us all. Uh, it was, it's great to have an indoor pool that we, had ac we have access to, to be able to do that. All of that is to say is that sometimes things are unexpected. The Jesus' baptism is unexpected. That's going to be a phrase that you're going to hear me repeat multiple times throughout uh, the course of, throughout the course of this message. John the Baptist came baptizing people, and he fully well makes the claim in Mark chapter 1 that he is not someone that would be worthy to even tie the sandals of the one who is coming after him. John sees that person as Jesus, points him out, and then Jesus looks at him and tells him, I want you to baptize me. Jesus' baptism is unexpected. Something to remember in all of this as we go through today, as we go through really our lives of faith, is that Jesus doesn't need baptism. You ever stop to think about that for a second? Jesus doesn't need it. That is not something that he is in need of. We are the ones who are in need of baptism. And Jesus goes out of his way to show us what that really looks like, how to receive that baptism. He goes up to John, John who says he's not worthy of this, and says, you will baptize me, because at least you get it. You are a part of this community that I'm building. He says, you baptize me. Jesus' baptism is unexpected. And is so in another way, also. Have you ever noticed that we don't actually see Jesus baptize anyone in the New Testament, in the Gospels? I'll let that sink in for a second. Think about it. We don't get that. We, um, I know that sounds strange to say, but we don't see it. 
Jesus instructed others to baptize specifically in his name, but he didn't do, himself, didn't do it himself. How does that work? Remember that Jesus really, really, and I mean really, 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 doesn't need baptism. Remember what baptism is. It is a sacrament. And the uh, definition of a sacrament is that it is an outward, invisible sign of an inward and invisible spirit or grace. Jesus doesn't need anything to tell, to tell him that he is at work in you and in me. He doesn't need that. Why? He's Jesus. He knows where, where he is and where he isn't. But we need to know how to share it with each other. We need to be able to see that and identify that with each other. How do I know? How do I see that inward and invisible grace at work in you? We see that through the outward invisible sign of baptism, of the sacrament. We need baptism so that we know Jesus. So that we can experience his fullness and mostly so that we can share it with one another. Jesus didn't baptize anyone, but he showed his disciples and told his disciples to do it. Quite literally, so that the community could build itself up with baptism being what truly distinguishes us from everyone else. From our reading in Acts for today, Jesus' baptism is unexpected. When we pick the story up in the book of Acts, we have a group of people who had been baptized already, but they had not been baptized in Jesus' name. And that's a key. In fact, that's probably the most important key that we need to, we need to think of when we look at baptism. Baptism was not a new practice with John, and it certainly wasn't a new practice with Jesus. But with everyone else, it had to be repeated. Even John would say that his, his baptism was one for the repentance of sins, and that was something that was going to have to be done multiple times. Jesus' baptism, being baptized in Jesus' name, didn't have to be repeated, does not have to be repeated. It, and it comes with the Holy Spirit. This makes it unique. This is God's way of saying, no, I really meant, meant it when I said I love you and that you are my people. This is a baptism that goes far and above all of the others. From our reading in Acts, those men had been baptized in a manner like what John did. When they were asked, they, they were asked, what baptism did you receive? They said, John's. And it was referring to a way and a meaning for the baptism that they had received. But Paul then baptizes them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember this, in the name of the one who John himself said um, goes beyond repentance. This baptism says that you can be made whole and that you can be made complete again. And this is because it comes from Jesus in his name. It is the community of people recognizing Jesus in one another. Jesus doesn't need baptism. And that's unexpected for us. We are the ones who need it. We need it for this reason, so that we know. We know that it doesn't need to be repeated. We know that it takes place above anything else we have done or could ever do. What makes it even more impressive is that baptism always adapts. Or perhaps more accurately, I should say, that... Uh, um, uh, it's not baptism that adapts. We adapt to it. What we look for is a very the answer to a very simple question. Is Jesus involved? Remember, in Jesus' name was what made those men's baptism unique, made it different. Receiving the Holy Spirit made it different. 
Is Jesus involved is an incredibly important question when we start talking about baptism. And so baptism isn't really adapting at all. Itself is not, is not adapting. It's just that we are adapting now to something that is unexpected, that we didn't know before. In today's world, baptism comes with all sorts of questions because it's not something that is super familiar to folks outside of the Christian world. And in fact, inside of the Christian world, we sometimes don't always understand what it is that's going on. And for that, one of the, one of the biggest questions that we're facing right now in regards to baptism is, what do we do with being online? I had a friend of mine, if you're watching this right now, Andy, yes, I did work it into, into my sermon, this, this thought, this idea. Because there's a question out there that says, can you be virtually baptized? Can you be baptized online? If you are watching the service online today, and if you're watching this video, then yes, you are, you are, uh, you are part of this online community. And you are a part now of something that we don't understand, that we don't know what to do with. And we aren't sure how it fits into our lives of faith yet. Despite all of the experience we have with it, despite how, uh, how this is a part of every, all of our lives anymore to be online, we don't know what to do with that yet. And so the easy answer that gets tossed out there is that, of course, you cannot be baptized online. You cannot be baptized virtually. You can't do it. But that's not the real reason. That's the easy reason, but it's not the real reason. The real reason goes back to why Jesus tells us to be baptized. Quite frankly, this is where our challenge is. It's because we haven't yet figured out how we come together as a community of faith in online spaces. Until we answer that question, we'll never be able to figure out any sort of virtual baptism if it ever happens. That's not a problem with baptism, that's a problem with us. We are still working to adapt to the unexpected things. But here's what we have to know in the unexpectedness of baptism. And it goes back to an old, old saying. And that is that Jesus taught us everything that we know about baptism. Of that, there can be no doubt. But some of you already have finished out the last part of that statement. It's an old, it's an old statement. It gets, a, it gets adapted and changed for lots of different places. Because the second part of it says, but he didn't teach us everything that he knows about baptism. Right? This is what I love about this. This is why baptism can be unexpected even to this day. Because as time goes on, Jesus continues to share more with us about what baptism means. So we go back to the most important piece of baptism, that question we ask. Is Jesus involved? That question. If yes, then we ask, how is he bringing the community together through a baptism? And then that is our challenge. That is our call. When, we're, when he tells us to go and make disciples of all the nations, this is the biggest part of that. How do, we come to how do we come together in community in his name, being baptized together with one another? The good news is that we don't have to figure it all out. We just need to be working on it. And to do that, we do it just as Jesus taught us, together. Even with a great diversity of voices, and we may not always agree on much, even. But if we can agree that we can come together, that Jesus calls us together, and we are, we are bound together in baptism, we can figure it out. We can make it work. So do this for me. Uh, originally in my, in my sermon, uh, I'd say, go out and live into your baptism. My more practical brain says, in 48 hours, go out and live into your baptism. Let the temperatures come back up a little bit, unless you see an opportunity in a unique sort of way. But go out and live into your baptisms. Live into the baptisms of your friends and your family. Live into the baptisms of all the people in our community that God has brought together. Remember that Jesus gives us baptism so that we can share life more completely. As we share that life, know that we will find ourselves in unexpected places. And that's okay. 
because it's in those places that we grow. It's in those places that we come together. It's in those places that we truly begin to understand the depth of what baptism means and why it is that Jesus gives it to us. So let us go and be those people that live into our baptisms in this day and all days. And let us most importantly do this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.